lo me seguila Pe fanti la voi sama So welcome, welcome um, My name's Claire Thomas-Gill and um, uh, apart from the thrill to, to be here tonight and to and see this film with all of you I've been asked to break the ice <laughs> So um, basically, I just want to wish you all a very happy International Women's Day to start with. Yeah. In the uh, company of some internationally renowned women, uh, uh, we have, of course, Maureen Duffy, and we have Kelly uh, Hadji Dimitriou, and the very talented Alison Child, who played the main part in the film that you're about to see. Um, I feel very strongly tonight that we are in the presence of Sappho. <laughs> Our very first lesbian icon, possibly one who historically predates Valerie Singleton and Mitchell. <laughs> definitely up there. One of the earliest examples of a supremely talented, courageous, exceptional woman. And I think you'll all agree with me when I say, Sappho rocks. <laughs> Thank you. So, now, I have the pleasure of introducing the filmmaker of Sappho Singer, the amazing and talented, Jenny Hedy Dimitriou, who has come from <laughs> Athens for this screen. We're delighted to welcome her. including her bestseller, A Girl's Guide to Lesbos. Her work is shown in museums and galleries in Greece and also in Venice, Paris, Istanbul, Beijing and Sydney. She has an expert understanding of Sappho's poetry and regularly works as a consultant for BBC on programmes about Sappho and Lesbos. Jenny's films have been screened all over Europe and last October her documentary, In Search of Orpheus, won the Best Greek Documentary Award at the Aegean Documentary Film Festival. So now I'm going to hand over to Jenny to introduce her film. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for all for coming here. Uh, the best thing that is happening is that I am here and then with my friends. I feel like the most you be in the Renaissance, we are all dressed now. So this is the difference. Thank you very much. So. Yeah, I had the two things in my mind. One is that, okay, Sappho, for me, what I feel is a lesbian. So I'm going to show her as a lesbian. And with Maureen's text, I managed to do it. The second thing is what inspired Sappho. And what inspired Sappho was, uh, well, the love of beauty. And she could find beauty everywhere. She could find beauty not everywhere, maybe, but uh, for sure, um, in the nature. She is the first woman who managed to to express her feelings and uh, leave the epic poetry behind and uh, speak about what she feels. She, she, the first person in the world that she says, "I love, I want, uh, I desire, uh, I miss." Uh, and she did it in a, in a magnificent way, and she did it at the same time describing the nature around her. So um, what I want to, to show in, uh, in, in, in this film is, is the lyricism of her poetry and how this is uh, translated into images. Uh, because the only, the only thing that really remains the same since her time until now is nature. It's the nature where she was born and, uh, and, and, and she grew up. And this nature that we can also see when we go in Scala Erosos. It's the same moon, the same light, the same sea, the same landscape. Uh, it's what inspired her and what I wanted to, to present in my, in my film. 
um, Sappho is played by Alison Child, and uh, we have a, we have a different Sappho here. We have a mature woman, a woman who who feels, who 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 misses, a woman who who speaks about her uh, the girls that they went away about uh, what is right and wrong in this world. We have a real woman in this film. And uh, I hope you will enjoy it, enjoy it, and then you can ask me what you want after the film. <laughs> Thank you. So first of all, I want to begin by officially welcoming uh, Maureen Duffy. Uh, the <laughs> the writer of the screenplay, uh, national treasure, lesbian treasure that is Maureen Duffy. Um, I'm sure you already know her as a, a poet, a playwright, a novelist, a non-fiction author, a lifelong activist on gay rights and animal rights. She's also particularly known for campaigning on behalf of authors. Maureen is the author of 34 published works of fiction, including nine collections of poetry, non-fiction, and 16 plays for stage, screen, and radio, the most recently being the most recent big Sappho singing. And her first openly lesbian novel, of course, was The Microcosm, written in 1966, set in the famous Gateways Club. And of the 16 plays she has written, Sappho singing is the fourth to be inspired by Greek themes. It was originally written as a one-woman play and was performed by Jackie Scarvelis at Teatro Technis in 2012. Maureen is a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature and of the King's College, London, and a vice president of the Royal Society of Literature. Maureen, we are thrilled to have you with us tonight. So, um, I have many questions for both of you, and hopefully during the course of the evening, and now we've got two screenings as well, so uh, we'll be able to ask lots of questions, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to speak them in many ways. So I'll go from one to the other. Um, starting, if I may, with Maureen, asking how you came up with the idea of a script for the play version on which Sappho's singing is based, and how different it is for you to see your writing interpreted firstly for the stage and then for the screen. There's quite a lot in that, sorry. Should we, should we take it one at a time? Tell us about the, first, the stage version. Um, well, um, my um, enchantment, I suppose I should call it, with Sappho goes back a very long way. Um, I first came across her um, in the 60s, um, in an Italian translation, and I wondered whether Zelli actually knew who that Italian poet was. Um, I didn't read Greek. Um, girls didn't do Greek. They did Latin. Um, and so um, I um, was able to um, get more easily at um, Italian. And so uh, that was where I first came across her. Um, but then I uh, embarked on um, my later my biography of Afro Ben um, and found how she was appreciated or and vilified both in the 17th century among the writers there both male and female, so that several, if you were a woman writer in the 17th century, uh, you were likely to be called the English Sappho or something of that sort. Um, and you were likely to be described as, um, Dryden described Afro Ben as uh, that vile 
one would. Um, um, so um, that rekindled Sappho, but also, in a way, she has always been there because she is the earliest female poet whose name we know. And so she is our, our mother, our forerunner, our ancestor. And um, it, it is amazing, really, in an age of such uh, people as Sophocles and Euripides and so on, and the, the great Greek writers of the classical period, that she should have survived and still be there for us. So, um, and of course it went on and on. Um, uh, there's the Byron poem, the Isles of Greece, the Isles of Greece, where Burnham and Sappho loved and sung. Um, so, in a way, thank goodness she's never gone away and she's with us still. And we need these forerunners. We need our mothers. And so, moving over to what then became the film version, um, well, before I ask you any filmic questions or film-related questions, um, what, what do you feel, yeah, Jenny, is your own connection with Sappho as a lesbian yourself who grew up on that island? Do you regard her, as uh, Maureen says in some ways, some sort of ancestor? Uh, She's my great, great, great grandmother. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when I read her poems, it was not something that happened in my head, it happened in my heart. And I was immediately connected. It, it was like feeling that I had someone with me. I didn't know I, I was a lesbian at that time. But her poems, her words, as I, the translation that I, I, I read, they immediately connected me with with the female, with and uh, with a woman who was so strong. Then I started uh, learning more about Sappho. At the beginning, it was like like having someone with my part that I was I wasn't alone. Uh, as I said, they didn't teach us Sappho, and until now, if you go and speak about Sappho, they will use her only as a, a trademark to attract uh, maybe some tourists and. Uh, if you go and speak with the locals, and I did it many times, they will say, yes, Sappho, she was a great poet, but she, she wasn't a lesbian. It's extraordinary. Many of us, I think, maybe have a teacher or someone, or someone we see on television when we're young, and we feel something, and then later we go, oh, yeah, that's because we're gay and we recognized it. But for you to see it in someone's poetry um, at such an early age was incredible for that connection. Yes, and uh, she's with me all my life. I mean, since I was 15 years old. Actually, what I can say is that my connection is not intellectual, so uh, I don't care how she writes. I mean, if, if this is uh, how they interpret her. Because what is happening is that everybody is interpreting Sappho uh, according to what they need. Mm -hmm or what is their moral, and this is happening through the centuries. Tell it there's a strong emphasis in the film on the light of Lesbos, and I know that you feel that the light has a special quality there. Could you explain, uh, expand a little bit upon that and explain how, for you, it connects to Sappho's poetry, what the connection there is? Well, first of all, Lesbos has really a very special light. The light in, in Lesbos is very soft. After the sun goes down, there is still light on the, on the horizon. And uh, for a moment you feel that uh, the day is coming back, that it's not going to be night, but day again, especially in Eresos. Yeah, why I speak about this and Sappho? Because I believe that Sappho was uh, able, she was the person who managed to to see the light more than anyone else. She's a lyric poet. You can understand how she feels the nature. She feels, if you cannot recognize the quality of the light of the moon, and if you cannot see really the different blue, that the sea and the horizon 
and the earth has when there is no light, when there is no moon, then you cannot understand Sappho. That's why I say that when we go to, to Eresos, we can all become poets and we can all get connected with Sappho. Because even if you don't want it, you will see this light. And so this is what I wanted to bring in my film. Wow, that's amazing, that connection between emotions, I mean, not the obvious, you know, between the darkness and the light. And, yeah, beautiful. She Thank saw you. it. I mean, yes, I, yes. I'm just trying to reflect, to, to, to translate it yeah. into images, but she made it, uh, she saw it and she described it in, a, in an amazing way. I never, never read anything else like that. I, I want to... So I'm going to one to the other, if you don't mind. Um, I want to jump in right in the deep end, Maureen. Could you speak about the concept of legacy, which for me came up in the film? Um, is a concept like legacy a difficult one to explore in a literary work? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's totally inspiring. Um, and uh, the idea of Sappho um, has been with us, um, oh, well, ever since, presumably ever since she died. But certainly in English literature, women have always looked back to Sappho, to, and sometimes they've been called uh, the English Sappho as a pejorative term, um, but there has always been this consciousness of her as an antecedent, as a sort of mother of uh, feminine literature. And um, I think particularly, as we saw in the film, um, uh, there wasn't time to explore it. Um, um, Afro Ben, for instance, in the 17th century, um, begs to be um, remembered. Um, let me with Sappho and Arinda be, um, and give my verses immortality. And this was the way in which um, women writers could lay claim to um, being, um, in a sense, in the canon. Um, and it's interesting if we look at the canon today to see how few women there actually are. Um, there was a great wave with the um, novelists, the Brontes and the Austin, Austin and so on. Um, but it's a sort of it's like an island, it's like the island of Lesbos in a way. Um, and on either side of that, there is a great dearth of women, although they were, of course, writing and publishing um, and looking as Afro Ben looked, uh, give my verses immortality. And this, in a way, I suppose, is a something that writers will often ask for. I mean, it's like Keats saying, um, shall I be among the English poets after my death? I mean, it's a lot of a sad accord. Um, but it's the same. And Virginia Woolf saying, um, shall I be in the DNB? A very limited, <laughs> but it means the same. It means, shall I be remembered? Because that is part of, I suppose, of what we all want as writers. Um, there is that famous sort of limerick. Um, when I am dead, I hope it may be said, his sins were scarlet, but his books were red. <laughs> <laughs> And Kelly, could you 
talk about some of the cinematic choices that you made when it came to the relationship between Maureen's text and how you chose to adapt it for the screen? Well, uh, I must say that it was quite a, a challenge. First of all, it's not easy to, to deal with a subject like Sappho, because Sappho is a legend. Sappho is, a, is something very strong, is our legacy. So how can you touch Sappho? Uh, you can choose the way to, to do the, the Hollywood style <laughs> films. If you have an, an enormous budget, and I don't know what. But anyway, even if I had too much money and an enormous budget, I would never have done something like Hollywood for, for Sappho. Or you can try to, to understand the way that she was writing her poems. And speaking about myself, I wanted to, to translate her words into images. So uh, Sappho was inspired by the nature. And Sappho has very strong feelings. So she, she feels the jealousy, she feels the love, she feels desire, she misses the, the girls that they go away. And I chose to represent her feelings with, um, with nature. Like when I use the, uh, the scene of, uh, of the sea, uh, when she speaks about jealousy, and you see the, the sea moving. So for me, I, 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 I chose it uh, to put this because it's like what you feel inside when you are jealous, like the wind that pass, passes over the sea and, and moves it in an uncontrollable way. Or when she, feel, she speaks about uh, the girl that they went away, and uh, I choose all these uh, uh, autumn leaves and, and the sea to express again the um, how, how our feelings are strong, because she misses the girls, and, and, and this feeling is strong as the waves of the sea. Um, so yeah, that was the way that I, I, I chose to approach her, and also, because the film is in, in two parts, I decided to, to show the two parts of the village of Eresos. I, I chose to make the film in the village of Eresos, where she, she was born. Uh, and, and where now there is this uh, the big lesbian community, and uh, I chose to 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 use the text, Maurice's text, uh, where in which Sappho is a, a, a woman, a strong woman who has uh, who, who, who dares to say her opinion, and she speaks about everything about. Uh, and, and, and it's a very feminist uh, text, I think this that refers to Sappho. So I wanted to present her as a, a modern woman. And uh, I divided it in the two, two parts of uh, Eresos, that it's the village of Eresos, as you saw, where it's a more traditional life, where she's born and she doesn't really like it. And then uh, bring her down to Scala, that is the lesbian paradise, because what would uh, Sappho do? if she was in our days. Maybe she would be, have been between the lesbians and having fun. And, and they, I also try to have to, to use the humor. We usually, when we bring Sappho in our mind, she's a high priestess, she's a very serious person, so she cannot have fun. But I wanted her to have fun. And this is why I, 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 I show her between women doing the most uh, simple, uh, jo joyful things. She speaks, the text speaks about the poetry, but I, uh, I show her just having fun on, on, on the beach. So I don't know if I succeeded, but that was my purpose, to show the other face of Sappho. I know that you've done a, a great deal of work, literary and visual, about the island. Um, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your projects? Um, uh, and also, have you, because you've done so many, have you ever felt that there was a risk of repeating images and connections? Um, and if so, how do you work around that? Well, I guess that uh, I have obsessions. And uh, my obsession is uh, about my island, Lesbos. I'm always inspired by the island. And I never get bored of it. Because you, cannot get, you can always discover something new if you're 
the way that you look at the things is new. I started as a photographer, so I can speak also from this point of view. And uh, first I studied the cinema, but then it was impossible as a woman to become a, a filmmaker. But uh, as a photographer or as, or as a filmmaker, I do believe that it's the way that you look at the things. It's not the subject. The same subject, because everything has been taught. Since the beginning of, of life, everything has been taught. And uh, probably in a much better way than, than I can say. But uh, what remains alive is, 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 is the way that you look at the things. So no, I cannot get bored and I cannot repeat uh, what I, I do about the island because every time is a different way that I, I look at it. A, a slightly different uh, subject, of course, but it's all related, Maury, is um, from what remains of Sappho's fragments, and they really are fragments, aren't they? I mean, and, uh, as you said earlier to me today, that you know, people are still hoping to find snatch words here or there on a bit of parchment. But you're a poet. Um, how do you rate her poetry, um, or is it impossible to see enough of it or to examine it out of the context in which it was written? Ooh! <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, it stands alone. It stands as itself. Now, okay, there's not much of it. I wish we had more. Um, but the fragments that we have, I mean, they're like pieces of mosaic. Um, they are so beautiful in themselves and so redolent of meaning and desire and passion and so on. Um, we, you know, it's enough. I wish we had more. It would be great if we had more, but um, what we have is so fantastic, um, given the time spent, far from anything else, but also the relevance to so many of us now, um, now that we begin to be um, out in front again, um, and we can sing with her, we can um, long with her, and so wonderful if we had more, they may find more one day, who knows. But what we have is so fantastic that almost in a sense we don't need more. And um, I know that you've, in a way, been through um, watching your words be created on stage through the play version. Um, and so looking at the film, as you've presumably done quite a few times now, um, are there any particular bits that stand out to you as being, as saying to you, oh, that's marvellous because I could never have done that on stage and yet Jenny has done this on screen. Any bits that sort of stick out that are so suited to being uh, cinematic? Oh, all the wonderful um, images of the sea and uh, the sky and the land and so on, um, you know, they are absolutely fantastic. The whole sort of surround of Lesbos um, and um, they, they tie in so well somehow with the, um, often the, the anguish in Sappho's writing, um, because, um, like most of us, um, she had clearly a very up and down emotional life, um, and the visual images wonderfully um, not only evoke the actual place, but they also um, evoke um, her, oh, what shall I call them? I don't know, her ups and her downs, her emotional seas and shoals and storms and, and 
lightning and dark and stars and moon. Yeah. <laughs> what Jerry has done is fantastic. It really is. Um, and we didn't know each other, we didn't communicate, you know, we trusted each other to get on and make an honest version. Um, and it's brilliant. I mean, and um, what she is so brilliant at is the visual side of it. So, Beautiful. Honestly, there's a very special atmosphere here um, tonight, and I feel that we have brought um, the Safist from Lesbos to England, and we go back and visit, and there's an exchange, and there are our spaces, and there always will be. And I'd like to thank you again both very much, Maureen and Jenny, for. Thank you.